Okay, we are here with ESPN's John Bucci Ross. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a broadcaster for ESPN in Connecticut. When I was your age, I loved sports and watched all the sports and played all the sports and read about all the sports. And at some point, probably 12 or 13, I wanted to grow up to be a broadcaster and figured, how can I do that? And uh, slowly I went to a, I picked a college where I could work on that. And then after I got out of college, I looked for that first job. And luckily I always dreamed of being at ESPN and I was fortunate enough to get there. Uh, we are in Canada. What does ESPN mean? We have TSN, which is pretty straightforward. Right. Yeah, it's a lot like TSN. In fact, ESPN owns a portion of T TSN. It's a, it used to mean entertaining sports programming network. Uh, that was the original acronym. That's what the ESPN stood for, Entertainment Sports Programming Network. But then they just kind of, once it became really popular really quickly, they kind of dropped the words and just figured, oh, ESPN. People just know what it is from the four letters. Uh, we are here to talk about the Stay the, Stay the Puck home shirts. How did this come about? Who do the proceeds go to? Yes, uh, I, I, I make some t I, I sell some T-shirts and hats and stuff with Bucci Overtime Challenge and college hockey, and I work with the Bar Down <laughs> company up in Canada where you guys are. And so they wanted me to wear one and put it on my Twitter and uh, get people to buy them and help the homeless in Canada during this time and any time. So, yeah, I have a relationship with the Bar Down Company. They, they do some of my hats for me and things like that. So they asked me and I said yes. We bought ours. They come next week. We hope to have them for uh, the, the episode. The next episode. Of Excellent. Uh, I didn't know we bought them, but... <laughs> I kind of like the okay, you know, I kind of like the I, I kind of like the mutant T-shirt and the camo though. Yeah, it's actually not camo. And this is like my favorite, favorite shirt. This is by Twenty Two Fresh. Are you a so, mutant? No, I just like wearing this. I like wearing T-shirts. This is uh, actually probably the yeah, first time I've worn a T-shirt on the one with Bob and Tom Good. We can send you one. It is a hockey shirt. Yes. Yes. Nice. Look at that. Who's Bob and who's Tom? I'm Bob. He's Tom. That's uh, you were at who's a uh, college hockey player you thought was a lock to play in the NHL and never did. Wow, that's an interesting question. Hmm. They all usually get a ch all the kids who are good usually get a chance. They at least get you know they, they definitely get one or two games. Um. Sometimes that's all they get. But uh, most people uh, who I thought was a lock, you know, I thought Mike Riley would have a bigger career than he's had so far. He played at Minnesota, played for the Canadians for a while. And he was really good in college. And uh, he's starting to play a little bit better now. Sometimes it takes longer uh, to get where you want to go in life. And uh, so he was really good in college. Sidney Crosby. Conversely, who is a college hockey player? who made it to the NHL, and you never thought they would. Hmm. We just flipped the question around. That's, that's yeah, the you, question. You, you, you flipped it on me. Let's see, guys who kind of, you know, those are kind of called like late bloomers. Sometimes I was kind of a late bloomer. It took me a while to get to ESPN, and, but I kept t just trying to get better and better. Some, some kids aren't real strong when they get to college. They got to get stronger and stronger. Um... You know, Jake Gensel's had a really good career. Probably, I mean, you figured he would make the, the NHL, but he's now he's a you know thirty, forty goal scorer and makes a whole bunch of money, and he's probably exceeded some expectations. Although he had a good college career, and his dad's a coach, really smart, um, so not real surprising. And he, and uh, but he's he's definitely a guy who's shown he's done better uh, than I thought, and. Um, so, yeah, it, I always root for those guys to, to make it and keep getting better. That's all we can do in life is keep trying to get better and be yes. a good Have you ever been to the Beauty League in Adena, Minnesota, during the summer, too? We saw Jake there and his brother, too. 
Yeah, I haven't seen a game yet. Certainly I know all about it. And uh, I know a lot of the guys up in Minnesota. And um, I have been to Edina before, but not to the Beauty League. Um, been up there for some charity <laughs> golf tournaments and, and things like that. So uh, I, need to get to, I need to get to a game some summer. It's pretty entertaining. Yeah, do, you enjoy like the, do you enjoy yeah. the challenge of doing hockey play-by-play? -play? Yeah, that's my favorite thing to do now. Um, I love being at the rink, at the game. I hope ESPN gets back into the NHL in a couple years. Um, yes. Because I'd love to start doing NHL games. I love doing the college games, but I'd also love to also do the NHL games. And I'm hoping ESPN gets the games after. This next year is the last year in America. It's on um, the last year of the TV contract in America. So we'll know – about this time next year, if there's maybe ESPN might be a, a network that also gets some games. I'm hoping for that. You're the voice of college hockey. Is there a team this year that you thought would thought it was their season? Well, certainly um, Cornell, who hasn't won for a long time. Um, they were a team that was right there, number one, number two all year. North Dakota uh, was good again. They're usually good. They're not too far from you guys. I mean, a little kind of a long car drive, but not too far. Um, I think they're mountain, they're mountain time zone, like Saskatchewan, right? I believe. Um, yeah. or maybe they're still central. I'm not sure. We, but, we go there a lot, a, a lot of the time. I, we flip, we yeah. flip sometimes. sometimes. Gotcha. Gotcha. We never change. We never change. So, uh, so yeah, so North Dakota Cornell probably would have been the big two. Boston College is really good. They have a player named Alex Newhook, who Colorado drafted, who I really enjoy watching. He was one of the best freshmen of the year. And usually when those freshmen have a big year like him, they then go pro. Um, either go try to play in the NHL or go play in the minors if they don't make it, start getting paid a little bit. But thankfully, he's coming back to Boston College next year. And I think he has a chance to be one of the best players in the country. He maybe win the Hobie Baker Award, which is given to the best college player. So I'm looking forward for uh, Alex Newhook in Boston College next year to be uh, back up. North Dakota should be good again. Cornell might lose some players, so maybe they might not quite be as good. But I think Boston College, North Dakota, they're uh, and not, obviously those are two teams we see do well a lot. But I think they're going to be good again next year. Who did you think? What did you think? What did you think when you were asked to start doing the Frozen Four, four play by play? Well, I asked my bosses. <laughs> I did. Uh, I, I had done some play by play for. Um, other college games in the regionals and then I reached a point where my contract was up and I was negotiating a new contract and I said hey I'd like to be I'd done games for about four years so I said you know I'd like as part of my new contract I want to be the voice of the frozen four I want to give ho college hockey a lot of attention give it a lot of respect and I'd like to start doing the games and luckily they said yes so sometimes in life you have to ask for things and uh, sometimes people will say yes sometimes you know sometimes <laughs> Sometimes your parents will say no, but sometimes they'll say yes. You just got to ask. Yes. Uh, it's kind of like a 50-50 draw. That's it. How, it's, either, it's either yes or no, not a big deal. How did the Bucci Overtime Challenge begin? Uh, that was just a fun game. We used to – we didn't call it that, but back in when ESPN had the NHL games and a game would go to overtime, the show I did called NHL Tonight, which was all the highlights of games, uh, you know, we'd come on right after that. Uh, after the playoff game and our show would start. So a game went to overtime. And while we waited for the game to end, because our show could start and, you know, as soon as someone scores, we have to be ready. So we have to kind of sit there. We don't have time to, to get ready for a show because it could, it could end at any moment with an overtime goal. So we would yeah. just kind of pick, we would pick a guy on each team and throw a dollar up on the set. And then if you happen to get the guy right, you win a couple bucks and then start the show. If not, you put yeah. your dollar back in your pocket and start the show. So I just brought it to Twitter one night, and I couldn't believe how popular it got real quickly. And, and it's been really fun. People seem to get a kick out of it. I made hats and T-shirts and give away hats and T-shirts. And, and I sell them on my website as well and give lots of money to charities. And uh, so it's been really a fun little thing to do. Did you ever think you would raise this much money for charity? No, I mean, I was, I was, I, when I bought, I bought a thousand t-shirts when I first said I'd start giving t-shirts away to winners instead of just retweeting them. And then I would also sell them and give those proceeds to a hockey charity, whether it's a charity to help a hockey team or a charity started by a hockey player, something hockey oriented. And I was afraid, but am I going to be able to sell these t-shirts? They cost me a little bit of money. 
but they sold quickly and then I sold more then I got black t-shirts and I got hats and I got koozies and I got all kinds of stuff and so yeah the giveaway you know about a quarter of a million dollars uh yeah that's really cool I thought if, if I give away a couple thousand I would have been really happy and excited but to give away that much over the years has been a lot of fun so is your garage full of OT challenge and <laughs> it is all bunch of hockey stuff it is. I should, I should give you a little tour of where my stuff is. Um, I'll just give you an example. Yeah, so I, I have a house here in Connecticut. And, and just we'll go out here to the garage, just to give you an idea. This is actually, I think this is just college hockey stuff here. But there's some, um, here we go. So, like, yeah, so this is my garage. There's some Bucci tank tops with the logo and, of course, Thin Mints right there, right there. Um, and then here's some towels, Bucci golf towels. So yeah, and there's some college hockey. There's some college hockey hats there. I got different colors. And we got some sweatpants. And there's some coasters and koozies. And if, if if you guys ever grow up and have a baby one day, I'll, I'll get some onesies for you too. How about that? A little sparky can have. Them. So yeah, so that there's here and there's another room up above the garage which has a lot of stuff as well. So yeah, so I got stuff here and people will make an order. I'll go on my I go on my laptop, I'll see the order, blah, blah. This is my little printer where I make the labels and print them out. And I go to the post office and mail them every day. I pretty much do that. You know, usually there's a few every day for uh, most days. And uh, that's kind of it's almost like a little something to do during the day before I go to work tonight. Like I'm going, I work tonight. So it gives me something to do in the morning and the afternoon. Go to the post office and uh, drop them off. And then uh, and I get ready to go to work and go to ESPN tonight. It's something to do. It's something to do. Something That's to do and something. raise some money. Yeah, it's kind of fun making okay. new products and thinking about new products and sending the people okay. out. Okay, we will be ordering kid sizes. <laughs> pretty much because we're kids. Um, how did the chicken ch bucket challenge come about? Chicken bucket some, uh, just a guy at work didn't think I could eat a whole bucket of chicken because I'm kind of I'm one of those skinny guys, but you got to watch out. Us skinny guys can eat a lot. Yeah, yes. we, we we can eat a lot because our stomachs can expand a lot. So he he didn't think I could eat a whole bucket of chicken chicken by myself, and I said sure I could, and I so I did it to win it, kind of to prove it to him I could do it, and then it became a yearly. Thing. And then you just kept on proving him wrong, and it's just so fun to do that. Just yeah. once, just once a year. Just once a year. You probably shouldn't eat fried chicken every day. It's probably not the best thing for you. But, hey, we can do it once a year, right? Maybe two times a year. You never know. You Maybe never know. Twice, yeah, once every six months. That seems fine. In doing our research, we looked through a bunch of uh, this is Sports Center commercials and could not find you. Did you ever do one? Yeah, I've done a few. done with Wayne Gretzky, which was awesome. How about that? Uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Um... Adrian Peterson, uh, David Ortiz. So, yeah, I've done probably – I've probably done seven to ten. So, yeah, the one with Gretzky was cool. It was me – the the premise was me and my co-anchor on the desk. He was playing the coach. So he would he would blow a whistle and say, change, like you're changing lines. We would hurry up and get off the set. And then two other sports center broadcasters would get on the set. So it was kind of a fun one. But – yeah, if you Google Wayne Gretzky, this is Sports Center, it should come up. Uh, and uh, Shaquille O'Neal was a funny one. He went up, he was dressed as a policeman. He went up at a tree to rescue a kitty. But when he came down the ladder, he was actually holding a full human mascot of LSU Tigers where he went to college. It was kind of funny. This big guy could easily pick up another person, but it was actually the mascot, not a little kitty, but actually a full grown adult he was bringing down the ladder. And it was the LSU mascot where he went to college. So that was a fun <laughs> one, too. So, yes, yeah, so, so I've done a few of those, and, uh, and those, those, were, uh, those were a lot of fun. How do you search up the Shaquille one? What would you search up? Probably Just Shaquille. I think, I think that's the only one he did. So this is Sports Center Shaquille O'Neal. I think that's the only one he did. So that one should come up as well. Me and Stuart Scott were watching him looking up, coming down the, uh, the ladder with the, with the mascot. Why didn't you get to do the Crocodile Hunter one? That was a good one, wasn't it? I wish. Yeah, a lot of times it's just it's who's working that day. They, they don't know when the athlete or when the actor could be there, so they might find out two days in advance, and then they say, hey, can you come in Thursday early for work and do this? You know, Because we, usually we, take, we film those in the morning or afternoon, and then we work at night. So we either have to come in early or come in our off day, they would ask us. And so 
they might have one person in mind sometimes, but a lot of times they try to spread it around and get people who are available. If you have questions for John, please put them in the comments. Please. We really need questions. Actually, we really don't, but who was your favorite, favorite hockey song? team growing up? I was a big Bruins fan because my dad grew up in Boston. So uh, even though I lived in Pennsylvania and Ohio, uh, my dad was from Boston. So he was a big Bruins fan. So I was a big Bruins fan when I was a kid. Yeah, we have a signed Bobby Orr photo in our house. Everyone has one of those, don't they? That's the best picture in the world, isn't it? That's uh, him flying through the air. Yep. Every hockey fan probably, probably. If you don't, that's okay. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah he's signed it's a lot. Signed. He has signed a lot of autographs. That picture's probably raised more money than any picture, you know, at charity events and any picture probably in sports history. Um, he has signed so many uh, autographs with those pictures that have been sold and auctioned. And, and uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, I, it's a great picture, and he's a great person as well as a great hockey player. Jay Don Rich asks, which of your sports center co-anchors would you, do you like to work with? They're all great. They really are. People ask me that a lot throughout the years. I work a lot now with uh, Michael Eaves and John Anderson and Kenny Main and Steve Levy, and they're just a lot of fun. Uh, me and Scott Van Pelt always had a fun time together. Uh, but Chris, me and Chris McKendry, her and I worked in the afternoons for three years. That was a huge – that was fun. Nicole Briscoe, Lindsay Zarniak, of course, Stuart Scott. I did my first one with him. So it's been a dream come true to work there. Sports story has touched you the most that you never expected it to. Hmm. Boy, I, I'm easy. I, I'm easily to get to. Uh, I'm a pretty emotional person, so a lot of those stories can uh, can make me, can make me cry a little bit. So, uh, you know, whatever. Really, it doesn't take much. Whether it's just a, an amazing season or someone coming back from an injury or an illness, of course. Uh, even going back to USA winning the gold medal in 1980. That's there's all kinds of different emotions in sports. That's the best thing about it. And and that's that's probably why I'm such a big fan. Pete eight three eight two asks, how, how long have, have you been, been with ESPN? Twenty three and a half years. I got there in nineteen ninety six, and I'm amazingly still there. Was there a sports story that you wished would just go away? <laughs> uh, that's a that's interesting. Go away. Well, right now, no games. I wish that would go away. I want to watch games. So I'm hoping we can, uh, can all get healthy and better and we can start watching hockey games and baseball games and football games and basketball games. I have a question for you. So I just made this up, but when you were in Boston, did you ever get to watch the Boston Celtics? I did, yeah. Larry Bird was one of my all-time favorite athletes. So, uh, so I actually saw him play in Ohio when I lived in Ohio. They came to play Cleveland, and so I went to the game while I was in college. And um, so that was really cool. And uh, so, yeah, he was one of my all-time favorite athletes. Jacqueline WHL asks, who is your favorite female hockey player and, and why? Well, all-time, probably Cami Granado because she's a, she's a good friend. She married Ray Ferraro, who played in the NHL. And so uh, Cami was captain of the USA team when they won their gold medal in Nagano the first year they had w uh, women's hockey in the Olympics. So she's really she's, – uh, she's probably one of my favorites there and – and uh, Hillary Knight's fun to watch. And there's, some, there's Brianna Decker. I have one of her T-shirts, a USA T-shirts. I wear it all the time. I was wearing it today. So, yeah, women's hockey is really becoming uh, bigger and better. And I'm happy for all those uh, women because they really dedicate themselves. And they're great athletes and they're fun to watch. Have you ever read a favorite uh, sports-related book that you'd recommend to our viewers? I read books all the time. I'm reading a book right now on Red Grange. He was a famous football player in the 1920s in America, uh, went to Illinois. And so I love reading sports biographies. And, um, and that's what I'm, I'm, I happen to be reading right now. So, uh, yeah, I highly recommend. I'm a big fan of reading. I think it's how you can separate yourselves and you can make your, you can self-educate yourself, make yourself smarter than other people. Like when you guys, when you get older and you're competing against people for jobs, if you read more books, you'll, you'll be a better candidate. So, uh, yeah, I love, I love all kinds of books. And the one I'm reading right now, like I said, is Red Grange. I'm learning a lot about him and his life. Do you have any new books in the works? We know about your Keith Jones one. 
Anything new? Thing <laughs> new? A lot of a lot of time and uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing. I was thinking about maybe writing a book of all my favorite hockey columns I wrote over the years on ESPN.com. I, I wrote a column on ESPN.com for about about 15 years. And that was a lot of fun, and I wrote a lot of them. So I was thinking I'll maybe taking all my favorite ones and maybe rewriting them or talking about them and, and re some sort of hockey book for all my favorite uh, columns throughout the years. That's still possible. Marky asks if Barry's mullet is still in <laughs> playoff mode, with that, even without hockey now. No, oh, it's always in playoff mode, baby. Barry's always got that hair ready to go. You never know, right? you got to be ready to go. Like you guys, you got some nice salad there, some nice healthy – Heads of hair, so you're ready to go for the playoff hockey, aren't you? So yeah, Bar Barry's always ready. Barry's a TV. Barry's a TV star. He's always ready. Tom, watch what Tom, Tom. other sports do you enjoy watching? Have you ever watched AFL? Uh, AFL? You mean the Arena Football League? No, the Australian Football League. So oh, Australian Rules Football. Yeah, when ESPN first went on the air, when I was about your age, you, how old are you guys? Like thirteen? 11. 11. Okay. ESPN came on the air when I was 13. Uh, so one of the first sports they showed a lot was Australian rules football. So we watch, I've been watching that for a long time. Um, but yeah, I, I really love, I grew up loving everything. Hockey, basketball, football, baseball, golf, tennis. I love, uh, I love all sports. That's why ESPN is a great place for me to work. Ow. Did you yeah, have very a, very have very you taken up any yeah. hobbies during COVID-19 like baking bread? No, I'm not a big I'm not a big bread baker. Would you, would you injure your wrist there, Bob? I don't know. Did you come here for this? this? <laughs> no, I just I just uh, I just woke up from a nap actually because I worked late, so I got to take a little nap. like hockey players take naps in the afternoon on game day. I do the same thing. I don't. So, so I'm nice I'm nice and fresh because I I go on the air at eleven o'clock at night, so I got to be fresh at eleven o'clock at night. And we, uh, that's why we never watch it. Because we, yeah, yeah, we need to go to sleep. I don't. Well, it's on 9 o'clock, Saskatchewan. We don't ESPN. Are you tired of washing your hands yet? I've always washed my hands. I've always been good at that. I've always, uh, I've been always, like, all the, these new habits that they're talking about, luckily, I've already, I've already, already have been doing. I'm not a germaphobe like Howie Mandel, who's from Canada. You guys know who Howie Mandel is? Bob's a germaphobe. Yeah. I don't like the yeah, Half of the time, I'm scared that he spit in my cup. Why? Well, that's uh, a good. That's a good fear to have. Tom sounds like he's a. I'm not a germaphobe. I literally don't care if I get germs. Yeah, we're, we're, our bodies are pretty good about fighting germs, so you can, you know. But you know, you gotta, you gotta watch yourself a little. Bit. Good to wash your hands. Yeah, I'm. I'm just a very, very. I'm not really scared of COVID nineteen though. That's good. Good. Uh, yeah. What has been the most surprising thing that came out of COVID-19 for you? Most surprising what? Thing that came out of COVID-19 for you. Uh, like not much. My life is, you know, my life hasn't changed all that much. Um, I can't go to the gym anymore, and, which I like going to the local fitness place and working out and lifting weights. That's fun. But I can still golf here, and the weather's getting better, and I still go to work. And I go to the grocery <laughs> store and I cook. And um, after we're done, I want to make a nice steak on my grill. So that's that hasn't changed. So not too much has changed. I just wish I could go to the gym and do some bench presses. Well, in here there's golf courses, so. Yeah, I'll come up and play golf uh, with you guys. Thank you for joining us and thank you for letting us to your home. Well, I think this is it. That's yes. it. <laughs> I'm so sure. sad. I'm so sad. Anyone have any more questions? Then we want to keep this going. Seriously. Yeah, I thought you guys were like becoming my best friends. I thought we were like becoming buds. Yeah, we were. Like, we are. We are. We you are. Just shoot, just, you just you don't have friends. anything to add. Like, seriously. Yeah, you're just shooting. What am I? You're shooing me away like I'm a minor leaguer or something. What's up? Yeah, no, the, the comment oh. section is. They literally haven't said anything oh. all, all video. Well, they said a few things. When you need, when you need special guests on ESPN from Saskatchewan, we are available. We are available pretty yeah, much any time. Barry Melrose is from Saskatchewan. Correspond, correspondence yeah. from Saskatchewan. He, Saskatchewan. He grew up. He grew up in Kelvington. How far are you guys from there? Two hours north. north. I didn't even know that this existed. Actually. Oh, so you're close to the 
You're closer to the border then. You're more American than Canadian. I don't think so. I don't know. Regina, so. Regina? Who's the best NHL player from Regina? Most famous. Uh, Probably Sam Steele or Brady Holt. Brayden, no, Brayden Holt is from Chris Saskatoon. Getzlaff. Chris Getzlaff. That's it. Chris Getzlaff. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Done. So you, got, you guys still go to school or you're all done with school? Oh, I know a famous player from Re Regina. Don Metz. Uh, or Nick Metz. You never know. 1950s Leafs. They're from the NHL. They were born in 1950s. And they played in the 50s. They played in the 50s, and they got uh, four cups. That's a lot. Wow. Chris Curtis. Four cups. Four Chris. cups. A lot. There's a lot to say about hockey in Canada. There is a lot to say. My, my grandma was born in Newfoundland. What has Sports Center been like without sports? Where there... Will there? Will there be lots of Korean baseball highlights tonight? Yeah, we've had a couple. We've had we, last night. We had three Korean game highlights, and uh, so we'll probably have two or three every show. I'm talking with Jeff Passan tonight. He's our baseball reporter. Apparently, they might they're floating out a date where they might start the baseball season in America. So Jeff is our baseball our baseball uh, insider, the guy who comes up with the trades and the information. So. I'm curious to see what he has to say about maybe Major League Baseball starting the baseball season. Huh. Have you guys been to a Blue Jays game before? No. I probably – I've seen the Tigers no. game. Tigers or Twins versus Twins. Tigers versus Twins. Oh, nice. In Minnesota? Like we've, been to, we've been to Minnesota. Yeah, and here was, like, probably my favorite thing of all time. I've been to Green Bay where – Green Bay Packers play. I was on a tour of the stadium, and at the shop, I saw these things called cheese heads. It's literally, it's cheese that you can wear on your head, except it's yeah, not actual pretty... cheese. It's fake cheese. It's a hat of cheese. It's a hat of cheese. And you can use it as a pillow. Inspired, the park. inspired by. Yeah, you can literally have a cheese the pillow. But don't eat it. Whatever you do. <laughs> yeah, it, it's better. It inspired a bad trend of people wearing watermelons on their head for our CFL team. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very proud of my team for that reason. And why would you wear a watermelon on, on your head? Because it's... No, just, I have the right reason. Watermelon. Watermelon. It's delicious. It was a, it was a marketing scheme. Why do you do this to me, marketing scheme, Regina? What? Okay. Well, Bob and Tom, well, Bob and Tom, thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, it was. Let's good. let you go. Let's say the thing we said again. Thank you for letting us into your home. Thank and, you for joining us. And if you need anyone on ESPN for Saskatchewan correspondence, we're we, here. We're here, and we're probably playing Minecraft, getting ourselves killed. Ha! I called it. Oh, somebody yeah. just asked him, how's the golf game? How's the golf game? How's the golf game? Oh. Golf game is good. I uh, I played with my son last week. He got a hole-in-one. That was cool. My son, Jack. So that was a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot of golf, so the golf game is pretty good right now. I'll take both of you on for big money whenever you want. Deal. I'm probably not going to make a single shot. I play golf. Oh. Don't sell yourself short. You're a tremendous slouch. <laughs> Bye. Okay, okay. Bye. Bye bye. See ya. This is taking so long to end this. See ya, Birchie. Peace. 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 Mutants. Peace.